Hi everybody, welcome to All Games New and Old. I'm David Rodriguez. And I'm Hillary Rodriguez. And we are continuing our top 50 games of all time, this time covering numbers 40 through 31. Also, as a side note, I don't know if you noticed, but my shelves look very different. We have actually moved my studio from the garage, where it's very hot in the summertime and very cold in the wintertime, to uh, the master bedroom, where it's just fine in the wintertime and very hot in the summertime. <laughs> Uh, so, yeah, that's a nice change. Uh, it's very cool, trust me. When it gets all set up nicely, maybe I'll post a little video and, and show you what I've got set up, but right now it's still kind of a disaster everywhere that is not on camera, but <laughs> we're getting there. Uh, we're not too far from a, a good spot, so. It was a big project, moving everything around, so. I am literally in pain throughout my entire body <laughs> for moving so many heavy things and bringing games up and down the, well, mainly up the stairs. Oh, man. I hope you all appreciate this. It's a lot. <laughs> I, I'm suffering. I appreciate you. it. <clears throat> you I, do, because now I, you have... I have a lot more room in my office now. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, I want to. I want to lie and say she kicked me out, but we both kind of wanted to do this so we could, like, you know, control our own space a little better and not have to deal with each other so damn much. All right. <laughs> so let's get on with this. Enough of our personal lives. Okay, my number forty is a game. That is fairly grim. You and a small group of survivors hold up in a bunker after civilization as we know it is pretty much ended. It's winter time. Going out to get supplies could give you frostbite, but you need to do it sometimes. Other people might come and ask for your help and you have to decide if you're going to let them starve or if you're going to help them. And they're zombies. So that sucks. You could also die from zombies. And a traitor. And a traitor. Someone amongst your myths could be a bad person. It's always her. <laughs> um, <laughs> this game, uh, unlike Shadows Over Camelot, is heavily thematic. I think it's super, super thematic, which is probably why I like it so much. I love a good thematic game. Mm -hmm. It has these crossroad cards that you pull every so often, and um, you, you'll you'll pass that to the person next to you if, it, if you pull it on your turn. They'll read it, and it'll give you some kind of choice that you need to make, either as a group or yourself or what have you. And uh, just very cool, flavorful stuff that can um, be good or bad for you in the long run. Uh, it's Oh man, it is tense. It is a tense game. And I'm going to dare say that people who don't like trader mechanic games or are not super into trader mechanic games might especially not like this one because yeah. it is so grim and tense. That may not, I mean, you know, it varies by person, but I, yeah. I think that could be a, a thing. You don't have to play with the trader if you don't want to, and it'll still be a hell of a challenging game. Um, I really love knowing that amongst these survivors, one of them could be a serial killer or something, or an <laughs> arsonist, or whatever, mad scientist, who knows. Um, the thing that I do like about this game is that when you are the traitor, it gives you a background of why you're the traitor. That like, what, cool. you're, what you're actually, what, why, why you're betraying everybody. Yeah. Um, and so, as the person that was the traitor, like, that at least helped me more, yeah. because I don't like being the traitor, so um, <laughs> it at least helped me be like, okay, well, like, you know, I'll at least do this because, like, that's what my character is. It gave me a reason to yeah. try and do it, so. Yeah. And one of the characters is a dog <laughs> who could shoot guns. <laughs> or he could be a drunken mall Santa. I mean, really. What other game lets you do these things? <laughs> no other game that I'm aware of. Let me know if I'm wrong, but I bet it's still not as good as Dead of Winter. So, that's my number 40. <laughs> Dead of Winter. My number 40 is going to be uh, Pragna Kaput Ragni. One, it's kind of one of the first really heavy Euro games that we played. I know we were kind of avoiding Euro games for quite a while, and we picked this one up, and we actually really enjoyed it a lot. It's a very, he very heavy Euro game, um, but it's a lot of fun, and I really enjoy the wheel mechanic with, uh, when you're trying to decide what actions you're going to take. Um, I think it's a really unique uh, way of deciding that. I I agree. I love that that freaking wheel. It um, 
It's so neat because, like, in certain spots, like the actions will actually give you bonuses if like no one's picked it for a while. Mm -hmm. But if it's like freshly, like at the start of the wheel, it will uh, it'll cost you. So you have to really decide yeah. how much you want to do that. It's a really interesting system that um, that frankly scrambles my brain, and that's no yoke. So there's eggs in the game. It's a major thing because the bridge was made with eggs, not entirely. That'd be ridiculous. They mix it into like the mortar. Yeah. Watch our review. I <laughs> did a lot of puns in there, and I think yeah. I even put like a ticker on the bottom to I could keep track of how many. One of them was really like a stretch when I watched it again. I was like, this is barely there, but you know what? That's what you get. So <laughs> okay. Do you see what she has to put up with? It's awful. Yeah. All the Send time. Help. All the time. Okay. Uh, my number 39 is a crossover. It is Hero Realms, the competitive deck building game. Oh boy, we kind of said a lot of it before. Fantasy mm -hmm. setting, it's really simple, plays very fast, um, but I really, really like it quite a lot. I really want to delve into those co-op expansions though and see what those are all about. Yeah. Uh, we have a couple of them, we just haven't gotten it back to the table, so... I'm uh, excited to try that because it's it's super awesome. I think I think Star Realms has more expansions and stuff. Um, I just like fantasy better, yeah, in general. So, uh, but that's that is my number thirty nine hero realms. My number thirty nine is gonna be Anne's End. Um, it's a deck building game where it's and it's also co op. We are going up against a big. Uh, there's a big bad monster and then like some little men he henchmen minions that you're trying to knock out as well. The thing that makes this game really different is that unlike pretty much every other deck builder that game that I can think of, you don't shuffle your deck in this game. Um, and that took a while for me to wrap my head around. Yeah. Um, but it's it's kind of cool because you can it it helps you think more about how you're discarding your cards. Mm -hmm. Like a lot of deck building games out there, you can get bonuses if you can match up cards together in your hand. So it kind of helps you think more about how you're going to discard your hand and what turn order you're playing your cards. Yeah. I think it's cool about that. Speaking of the turn order is like, that's one of the few things that is randomized is there's like a turn order deck. And so, you know, each round you go through that whole deck the scary thing is it's possible that the bad guy could like get his two cards at the end of a round and his two cards at the beginning of the next <laughs> round. And Jesus, I don't even want to think about that. It didn't yeah. happen to us, but it could happen. And that ugh, gives me the shivers just thinking about it because it's bad news. Um, but there's a ton of bad guys, a ton of possible bad guys. So mm -hmm. we got to play that one more. Yeah. For sure. All right. My number 38 is brand new to the list. I only started playing it this year. It is Lord of the Rings, the card game. It is a living card game, and you guessed it, it is about Lord of the Rings. Um, wow, this game is tough as nails. It's hard. It's so hard. It makes me want to cry. Uh, they just, it's its the oldest of the current, I think, three ones that they're still supporting that, that are out, and they just kind of re-released it um, in their new sort of format where they have like their starter box. And now instead of having to buy all these like individual packs for characters, you get like a box that has several characters for one specific um, campaign. You don't have to use them in that, but they just associate with them for whatever reason. And then it has a separate thing with all the campaign stuff, which is a lot better way of doing any of these games. Because uh, I probably looked at that game before and was too intimidated to try to figure out where it even began or what's supposed to go and mm -hmm. connect to what. Um... But wow, I mean, just out of the box, there's three scenarios, and they kind of rate them, I think, one to ten, and like, so there's one that's like pretty easy, and there's one that's middle, and there's one that's hard. And I haven't even tried the hard one, because the middle one just stomps me into the ground. It is so, it is so hard. And I, people have said there's like one card in that box that makes that, that mission fairly manageable, but I haven't tried that one yet. So, um, in the meantime... I just keep getting stomped into the ground. But, um, you know, it, it is older. It You can tell it's older than Marvel Champions or Arkham Horror. But for some reason, I find it easier to get out and play. I don't know exactly why. I think it's a little bit less set up. But it has so many cool choices, because you only have a limited amount of heroes. And, I mean, you get more as you go, but you still have to decide, okay, we're in this area. Who's going to explore the area so we can kind of move on? And then, oh gosh, we're going to be in a fight. Uh, 
who's going to do the attacking, who's going to do the defending, because you can't do both. And that's tough, because you don't want to let all the damage come through, or have one hero take it and die. There's so many tough decisions in a game where your, your survival is always, always, always in question. Great game, tough as nails. We need to play this two-player sometime. There's some cards that don't really make sense uh, uh, in a one-player thing, but we're going to lose <laughs> probably a lot. Yeah. Just, so, I mean, yeah. But it's great, though. Yeah. Really, really like it. And I like I like tough... As long as I know it's a tough game going into it, I like tough games, so... It's hard. <laughs> real, real famously hard. That's my number 38. Lord of the Rings, the card game. All right. Uh, my number 38 is going to be Three Sisters. Uh, this is a roll and write game. Um, it's one of the first ones that we've played. Um, we've tried a couple. There's a few other ones that we've played, but uh, I wasn't a huge fan of them, but I really enjoyed this game a, a lot. You're, you have your garden. You have your orchard. You have your beehives um, and flowers and all sorts of different things that you have to kind of keep track of and gives you victory points. And yeah, I, I like the, um, I don't remember what it's called. I, the rotunda, I think is what it's called. Um, where the, it's the map where when you, you're rolling your dice, you, it decides what actions you're going to. Oh, the gonna, rondel. Rondel. There we go. I was trying to remember. I was like, why do I remember this <laughs> I was close, um, yeah. but I I actually really like that aspect of the game where you're not you know you ha you can't do the same actions every single time. So yeah, yeah, it's really you know I think a lot of the problem with like the early roll and ride games for me anyway was that they usually weren't very thematic. Like they'd mm -hmm. have a theme maybe, but didn't really feel like anything. That one I think really feels like you're you're yeah. growing your garden. It's 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 awesome. Uh, definitely took that one out. My number thirty seven is Tyrants of the Underdark. Hey, it's another deck building game mixed with something else. <laughs> it's a deck building game mixed with area control, and the theme is one that I especially love because when I was a young lad, <laughs> teenager, uh, a character was written into the Forgotten Realms setting called Dritz Stewarden, and he was your kind of typical badass kind of loner uh I don't know, stereotypes word, uh, um, character, and uh, but you know he 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 makes friends eventually. He does. He because he's okay, guys. Don't worry. Um, actually, I'm way behind on the books. He might not be okay anymore. I don't know. It's I don't know what's going on. Um, but regardless, I fell in love with the dark elves from that point. Uh, and this game is all about that. You are the dark elves. You are not Dritz, who is a nice guy. You are the dark elves who worship Loth, who is not a nice goddess. And you're trying to gain control of the Underdark. What's cool about this game, as I mentioned, it's a deck building game, but there's, I think, four different possible decks in the main box, and you take two of them and you mix them together, and that's going to determine the cards that you have coming out, uh, which is really neat. You're going around, you're sending assassins places, and you're trying to take over areas. There also is a neat mechanic where, you know, you get these cards in your hand, and you can, um, I forget the term they use, you can kind of, like, retire them, and then they're going to be worth a lot more victory points at the end, but usually the ones that are really good are the ones that give you more victory points. So you have to decide, like, when or do I want to get rid of these? Like, should I do that, or should I keep them? Uh, tough, tough choice. The game is not pretty. Uh, the artwork is pretty. It's the graphic design. Like, the artwork on the board is very dark, and, and probably is cool, but it's hard to tell because there's all these branching white, like, circles with white lines going up everywhere, and it just, bleh. And the cards look really just prototypey to me. I hate the graphic design of this game so much. But it's it's a fantastic game. They re-released it recently, and it costs like half what it did, but they got rid of a lot of the plastic pieces. But you can get it, and it still plays amazing. And, I mean, it was already pretty ugly. Are you complaining about not having plastic pieces? I mean... <laughs> It's, it is what it is, but it's worth playing despite the ugly graphic design, not the art. Art's great, graphic design terrible, um, but that's my number 37, <laughs> Tyrants of the Underdark. All right. uh, my number 37 is going to be Tiny Epic Galaxies. Uh, this is my favorite of the Tiny Epic games. Um, I do like all the Tiny Epic games I've played, I've really liked, but this is my favorite. Um, it's also, I think it's also the first one we played, and so that that it might just have a kind of a special space in my heart for it. So, yeah. um, but I, I like the simplicity of it 
but it's still a very well thought out game. Yeah, it's it um it captures a kind of typical thing of, of feeling like a bigger game despite it being a small game, but mm -hmm. um I yeah, I just think it runs I think it's a lot smoother than some of their other stuff is for yeah. sure. But yeah, great game. All right, my number 36, another crossover is Praga Kaput Regni. This is designed by Vladimir Suchi and uh I like this game enough that I've started like slowly trying to acquire others of his games so i'm impressed with his design in general just really like this game there's you know all these spots on the board that you're trying to put tiles down but someone might come and poach the spot that you wanted to have uh and uh, but it's it like you were mentioning it's um it was one of our first like really really euro euro game i don't remember which content creator it was but described as the euro one of the most euro euro games to ever euro or something like yeah. that and that's great though. I, you know, I bought this specifically because I wanted a Euro game like that to kind of see if that was something that I could enjoy. And you know, before it's like I built up a, a shell around myself to uh, to keep out the Euro games, but this is really um, broke it through the shell. You know, my heart is not as hard boiled against it anymore. And uh, if you have a comment, I'm let you say it. <laughs> No? I'd really rather just move on. <laughs> <laughs> Would you? Did I mention the game has eggs in it? <laughs> I'm not just saying this stuff randomly. Anyway, that's it. Praga Kaparagni. My number 36. <laughs> I will add. <laughs> <laughs> just a matter. One of the things I do really like about the game is that there are so many different ways that you can win. You don't have to just focus on one aspect um, and don't focus on all of them because then you definitely won't win. But like, there's a lot of different tracks that you can go on to try and win. So yeah, you're always looking on the sunny side. <sighs> My number 36 is going to be the downfall of Pompeii. This is a game that we got introduced to by some friends down in California when we were visiting in-laws. And it's a really fun game when we enjoyed it a lot, but at the at the time it was out of print and so we couldn't get a copy for ourselves um but it has since come been reprinted and so we were able to finally get a copy of our own um and it's just a really fun game it basically plays in two different well, almost rounds um one round you're you're building up your population and your um like your control of the city um, and then in the second half, you're trying to get as many p of your people out of the city as you can. Um, there's also voting, and you can throw your opponents into the volcano. That is, I mean, it's a great game, but that is legitimately <laughs> the best part. And, and someone gave the tip online to put, like, a little tea light inside yeah. of it, so it looks like it's actually, like, a volcano. Which yeah. We need to play that and do that. Yeah, we uh, definitely need to do that. Because that's awesome. All right, my number 35 is a game that fairly recently successfully funded on Kickstarter, it is Citrus. This is a really cool cyberpunk game where uh, there's this city that's built on this like tower, basically, and that's where all like the rich, fancy, privileged people live. But you're not one of those people. You're down in like the grungy undercity, and you've got like a gang that you're working for, and you're trying to like you know trade various kinds of contraband, whether it's like weapons or drugs or all sorts of stuff. And you're trying to basically build up these towers on the board that are essentially like the garbage chutes of the city so that your people can escape up into that area and get the life that you feel they deserve. There's lots of, uh, there's, there's like set collection to this. There's worker placement. I mean, there, there's all kinds of different mm -hmm. mechanics, but unlike some games we have that have mixed a lot of mechanics and it just feels like you're doing all these separate things. I feel like this game really blended them together. Yeah. Well. I did a really good job of like, <coughs> I, I you, I feel like you couldn't, like, a lot of games I feel like, oh, well, I can remove this mechanic and it would still be a good game. This game is, like, a, it would fundamentally change the game so much if you just removed any of them. Yeah, it really would. And um, I like the art style. Uh, I think, if I'm not mistaken, this is the designer, uh, Sean Lee's first design. And I was, I mean, one, because I wanted a copy myself, but I was, like, so overjoyed when it, it funded because... Um, I have not had a chance to really, to chat with him really, but he seemed like such a great dude. And I was just, I was thrilled to see, you know, his dream of having a successful dream, uh, a successful game, uh, become reality. And he knocked it out of the park. I mean, it's, it's great. Uh, you know, if you didn't back it, I don't know. 
I don't know the status of, of it coming to retail or what. I don't really know that. But if you get a chance to get it or at least try it, definitely do. It is well worth your time. That is my number 35, Citrus. Uh, my number five, 35 is going to be Bargain Quest. Um, it's a cute, fun game where you're uh, basically a shopkeeper um, running a shop in medieval times, kind of fantasy. You have patrons that will come into your store and buy items and then they go out and fight the bad guys. Um, if they win their fight, they're more likely to come back and buy from you again. And if they don't, then they're probably going to go shop with your opponent. Mm -hmm. So um, there's also like windows displays that you can set up to try and encourage people to come into your store. Um, and it's just kind of, it's kind of a fun game. And, um, you know, like, I think there's a lot of aspects of like running a retail store that they kind of put in into this game that, you know, m makes it fun and just a lot of like kind of small detail stuff like that. Yeah, for sure. We, we both worked retail manager before, so mm -hmm. it's like, you wouldn't think I'd enjoy a game about this, but yeah. <laughs> uh, but it is really neat, and I love how like your little individual display boards are all like a different looking store, mm -hmm. which is really cool. Yeah, let's see, I don't know, I don't feel like when it came out, I heard like that much about it. I think I even saw one review that was like kind of so-so on it, uh, but I'm really glad that I decided to just get that anyway, because um, it's, it's a real fun game. I like it a lot. So my number 34 is a nice, light cooperative game with hordes of variability and expansions. It is Marvel United. Oh man, it is It is not a very complicated game. It's super easy to get the hang of. You're just basically playing down cards in, in turn order that have actions. Every third turn, the bad guy gets to do something. You're running around this circular uh, track of locations, trying to deal with thugs and save pedestrians and keep the bad guy from doing whatever it is he's doing. Um, Gosh, it's awesome. And, you know, there's so many Marvel characters in this game. Some people, I don't know if it's because of the lightness or what, they'll, they'll say they don't like this game. Sometimes they might even say it uh, on their podcast, which is a bit of a board game hot take, if you ask me. But I really think it is a wonderful game. Great, you know, you, you can play with your family, but still totally fun with adults. God, I want to paint these things, and I just don't know if it's ever going to happen. Uh, it is a game, you know, they finally they finally were smart, brought it up to the A level, put in the X-Men. Heck yeah. Now it's gonna be a big deal. You just watch. <laughs> you get you get either starter set for uh, relatively cheap very often. Uh, I suggest you do. I don't know about how available expansions are, but uh, those uh, start adding a lot more um, variability and depth to it. So yeah. definitely look for those. Uh, my number 34 is Disney's Gargoyles Awakening. Obviously, it's based off of the Disney cartoon show, which um, I grew up watching, and it was one of my favorite cartoon shows. The thing that's really cool about this game is that, like, it has building, it has three D buildings that you construct. Um, it has models, but it's a really simplified version of a tabletop model fighting game. Um, but it's, because there's spaces and it, it just it makes it really simple for people to pick up and learn. Um, the base set comes with four scenarios. There's three uh, co-op ones and one one versus all game. Um, and you can play as the different gargoyles. You can play as uh, the detective and then in the one versus all, uh, one of you will be playing as Xanatos. Yeah, it's, it's pretty awesome. I've only played like the first scenario with you, I think, but... Mm -hmm. But we definitely want to play more. We definitely want to review that one because um, I think a lot of people liked that cartoon. Yeah. And I think, you know, and they may have missed that. So uh, we'll get to that. I promise? <laughs> sure. At some point, too, I, th uh, I know a suggestion that I, I had that I think <clears throat> would be a fun one to do is for us to do like a little uh, mini ranking of games that you can get easily get at places like Target. Yeah. Um, because not everybody has a really good ga local game store that they can get games from. Yeah, for sure. We're going to get to that. We have a few games that you can get there that I think we need to play before we do it. So yeah. We can, but yeah. All right. My number 33 is The Hunger. This is a game about the feeling I get about five minutes before I'm supposed to be going to sleep. It's awful and very annoying. Uh, it's not about that. It is... It is vampires. You play as vampires who have your sanctuary castle and you have to run out into the town and countryside to drink blood. And there's all sorts of people out there to drink blood from. Then when you drink their blood or you capture them, they go into your deck. The problem is 
they don't really do much for you in your deck. So they're kind of clogging up your deck, but you need them. There's places where you could consume them to get rid of them, but not too many of those. There's all these like cool little gold things around the way you can try to reach, including one at the very end of the whole track. But you need to get out and get back to the sanctuary, or you'll lose all the points you gained. And this is, you know, a push your like deck builder a lot like Clank. And I kind of wonder because um, Clank was put out by Renegade and Direwolf Digital, and Direwolf Digital just recently like got Clank back, so it's all theirs. And I kind of wonder if Renegade put this out because they wanted to have their um, their uh, Push Your Luck deck builder. I don't know. Yeah. That's my guess. But uh, I like this one just a little bit more than Clank. I feel a little bit more like I'm running out and um, doing these vampire things mm -hmm. than I do in Clank. I feel like I'm uh, diving or delving in a dungeon. I really, I think it's such a neat idea that the things you need are the things that clog up your deck. I haven't seen that in a deck building yeah. game before, I don't think. So I really like it, and I love the art. It's so weird. Yeah, it's very Tim Burton-esque artwork. Yeah. Um, and I, I agree, I like this better than Clank as well. Um, and I think, for me, the reason why I like this better than Clank <clears throat> is that the um, Push Your Luck is more... When you have to get back to the castle, it's more based off of... A certain number of rounds that you have to get back by, <clears throat> rather than one player decides that it's time to go back. Yeah, there's none of this like going for like the easiest uh, relic or whatever in Clank and then running back. You mm -hmm. know, you, you're. I mean, you could you could not go very far on the track if you wanted to, but I don't know if that's the wisest decision or not. So, yeah. uh, really fun game, but that's my number thirty-three, the hunger. Uh, my number 33 is going to be Twisted Fables. This is another deck building game that's kind of has a 2D fighter feel to it. And it's, it's just, it's a really fun game and the artwork is really well done. Some of it is a little bit sexier than I would like, but it's still tasteful enough. Um, I, I think actually some of the poses are more troublesome in that area than mm -hmm. the actual clothing or anything like that. But it's a, it is a fun game. They've done a really good job of making their own backstories for all these classic fairy tales. Some of them are classic, like Snow White and Little Mermaid. Some of them are not as well known, like Match Stick Girl. There's an Asian one that I had hadn't heard of before, but um, now I want to know more about their story. Yeah, yeah, it is a uh, is definitely a very cool game. It may be talked about again at some point. All right, my number thirty two is Ascension Tactics deck builder, deck builder, deck builder. Deck builder. Anyway, um, this is a deck building game mixed with a like miniatures uh, tactical combat game. And when I first heard about this, you know, I, I heard that it was gonna be like playable almost right away to anyone who played the ascension deck building game before like they added very few rules to make this happen and i was like no way like these kind of games <laughs> with the miniatures usually are heavy in rules i don't think i don't i don't see how they could do it but i had a little faith because i you know ascension has been a very popular deck building game i was like well maybe if anyone could do it maybe it could be done and wow they did it it's amazing i don't know i don't i don't it's amazing i i couldn't believe how well it played and how simple it is to pick up. A lot of variety with different scenarios. There's a campaign that you could play as that isn't like absurdly long, so it doesn't feel like you're going to be necessarily playing that game for like 800 plays before you're done with it. Um, yeah, it is so neat. Um, I didn't like the art in the original Ascension deck building game, but I think they use a lot of the same pictures, but they kind of changed the, the art style a little bit, I believe. Uh, I like it a lot more now. Um, just I am so excited because I know they're coming out with like a season two or series two or something at some point. So I'm dying to see what comes out in that. So that's my number 32, Ascension Tactics. My number 32 is Wonder Woman Challenge of the Amazons. Um, it has a little bit of deck building, but it's really more just um, going around and collecting accessories that will help you make your character stronger. There's models there, you know, it's the thing that I like about this game is that it's a really easy game to pick up and learn and teach. And because it's Wonder Woman, you can get a, it, I think it's a really good game to get people into the hobby game industry, especially women. Um, you know, you can definitely play as Diana, but there's a lot of other really um, 
great Amazons that you can play as well. And it's not like Diana is really super powerful in the game. So you feel like you're behind the wheel if you're behind the wheel. Um, and you don't, you don't feel like you're um, necessarily going to be do a uh, worse job if you're one of the other Amazons. Um, and then they have a lot of her classic villains to play against. Yeah, and it's kind of neat that the, the villains really change up, like, what you need to do a mm -hmm. bit. Like, like it changes what some of the symbology and stuff means, if I, don't, if I remember yeah. right. So, pretty a pretty neat game, for sure. My number 31, last one for this part of the list. Um, I feel almost like I'm describing the first one of this part of the list, in that you're a group of survival survivors, and you're trying to scrounge by and get what you need. You're holed up in a ruined building. But in this case, the situation is a bit more realistic. In this game... Uh, you are survivors of a war. Your city has been mostly destroyed, and you're just trying to get by and survive from day to day. Uh, that game is This War of Mine. This is a cooperative game. Uh, I, I put it that way because I, I've only played this solo, and I don't know how well it's going to work multiplayer because it's... I don't remember exactly how it is. I think you just all decide what everyone's going to do. And then uh, maybe for like big decisions, you take turns deciding. I don't remember exactly, but I don't know how well that's going to work in multiplayer. But, you know, there's no no zombies or anything here. This is really trying to bring home uh, what that situation would be like. You know, you have to go out at night and try to get supplies and you might find someone to trade with. But probably you're going to find people that are going to try to mug you for what you have. And then there's like these event cards or, or uh, uh, passages you look up in a book. And... This could be something that happens that helps you, or it could be something that happens that hurts you, or it could just be something that you saw, and it's an interesting thing that you saw, and that's it, and it doesn't have a game effect. This game is really, really hard. Um, I, I am not come close to winning, and to be honest, I'm not sure if winning is even the point of this game. I think it is an experience to have. I can't exactly say it's fun, but it's like how going out to the movies is fun, but not all movies are fun, you know? Uh, same kind of thing here. You're not going to be laughing and smiling and cracking jokes about the gameplay or anything like that. Not that kind of game. But you're going to have memorable moments. And uh, I'm actually going to ask a question to you, the viewer. Um, I was actually gearing up for this game to be reviewed. Uh, that was my plan. And then uh, the war happened in Ukraine, as it is still going on now as we record this. And I kind of thought, well... I, I don't know if this would be insensitive. I, I don't want it to seem like I'm trying to just get views based on... I mean, this isn't based on that war, obviously, but um, I didn't want it to seem like I was, like, cashing in. I mean, not that I'd get money, but I, on this, this bad situation that's happening. Uh, so part of me thinks that, and part of me thinks, like, wow, everyone should have to play this game right now because it might put a little empathy uh, into some people that maybe could use it. I'm going to put the question out to you, uh, fine viewers. What do you think? Is this an okay time to review this game? Should I wait until things cool off over there? Um, I just don't know. I don't know, and I don't want to make a move that's going to upset anybody, as far as that goes, but tell me your thoughts on this. I would really love to hear it. Uh, if you don't want to like just put it out in the open in the YouTube comments, um, you can look me up on Twitter and send me a message. That's fine. Um, you know, I just want to know other people's thoughts on this, because I don't know if I'm being overly cautious or not, but regardless, I know that got kind of glum here at the end. I'm sorry. That's just where it fell. Um, that is my number 31, <laughs> This War of Mine. Alright. Uh, my number 31 is definitely the first family game that I have on my list this year. I think it might be my only family game game on my list this year. That's gonna be, uh, Dino's Not as Assembled from Things 12 Games. It's a really cute dinosaur thing game. You're basically archaeologists in a museum and you're going out digging up bones, trying to get the bones that you need to assemble different dinosaurs. Um, and the first player to be able to complete three dinosaurs in their section of the museum wins. You can also steal bones from another player, but if you do, then the uh, security guard goes over and kind of protects that player for a little while. And it's just, it's a really cute game. The artwork's really well done. It's really cute. It's also a really good game for kids. Our seven-year-old loves it. It's her favorite game to play. But it, it it's a, 
not only it's a game that's fun for the adults to play as well, but it also teaches a lot of good core game mechanics that can be transferred over to other games later on. Yeah, I think this might be my favorite family game. Uh, it's just great. And mm -hmm. I was so, last time we played with our seven year old, like she wanted to um, play without us helping her because usually we've kind of had to help her a little bit. And she beat us, yeah. like, like fair and square, she beat us. So, I mean, I was super proud. I think that was really awesome. So, um, yeah, thank you for ending this on a cheerier <laughs> note. I appreciate that. It is a great game for sure. So that's it for this section. That was number 40 through 31. Uh, the next one will be coming out soon, so watch for it. Um, and I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please like and subscribe and click the little bell icon so you can know about the next time I put out a video and when these next uh, sections are going to come out. Otherwise, I look forward to seeing you all again around the table at All Games New and Old. Bye. Bye. Well, I don't know how this Daniel's going, oh. <laughs> right. Um... It. Yep. So that's my number. Uh, uh, otherwise, look forward to. S if you enjoyed that video, you might also like this one. Or this one. If you like any of our videos, what you should do is click this little button to subscribe so you'll know about the next time we put out a video. We'll see you around the table. Bye. Bye.